In our world today, people often forget how important it is to have others in their life. When a person is isolated on an official capacity, it is difficult for them to move forward. When someone is cyber attacked and interfered with, it is literally impossible for them to have telecommunications tools and other things at their fingertips that are really allowed by federal law to be ours alone. You see, it's been a long time since the Nixon era when they had all this recording going on illegally, and nowadays they're not supposed to be doing things like that. But there are young technologists who have not understood our U.S. Constitution. There are young people who have not listened well enough in their government classes or in their history classes to understand the rights of others do not belong to them. It's very difficult today to continue on sometimes when people take away our rights. When a person decides that they're going to attack another individual, there are several ways to do it. When I take time to rebuke someone, I will do it one of two ways. I will either confront them directly if I have a true relationship with them, or I will write them a letter. If I choose to write them a letter, I may or may not sign it simply to give them the space, the intellectual security, the emotional ability, the spiritual forwardness to process the information without malice towards an individual. You see, one person can provide a complaint, but it might actually represent hundreds of people's opinions after experiencing something over weeks, months, and even years from an individual. When that person provides that information, it is their lawful right to read it or not. They can stop in the middle, they can drop it off, they can forget about it, or they can try and retaliate against someone who took the time to tell them the truth. The reality is I've been flabbergasted at some of the experiences I've had in churches and other organizations that profess to help people. They have put it out there that they're going to ruin a life, and so in that regard, other people get on board and play the game. They play the game of destroying a person's rights. They take things off their person, they pull things out of our pockets without us knowing, they do all sorts of things to say, we have control and you don't. I literally know a bit about control because I had some family members who really thought they had rights in my life. They violated my rights, they took my abilities, is somewhat truthful. But I do have someone this week literally coming into my sister's home, allegedly, of course, but visibly obvious, and getting into my intellectual property, returning things to me. I haven't gotten everything that was stolen a couple weeks ago back. It's improper for that person to keep it, but openly what stopped them in the first place from walking into someone's own home, not mine, opening up someone's property bag, which is mine, and taking things out as if they had some lawful right to do it. The arrogance of that, the illness of the mind in that thinking is sort of beyond belief. You see, when I talk like this, I'm talking about my life, but the truth is, have you looked around your own home of late? Have you checked your garden? Have you looked to see if you have all your vegetables? Have you looked in your garage to make sure that when you leave the door open, the things that you left open to the world and the universe didn't get pilfered away by the people who are here illegally or immorally in their mind who think that an open door is an invitation for theft? You see, in our U.S. Constitution, in the amendments in particular, it says in Amendment 4, we have the right to be safe in our person, our paperwork, and our property. It's not exactly listed like that. That's how I've summarized it, the three Ps. It also leads to our performance, that when we're safe in those things, when we have security in those items that help to make us who we are today, it allows us to soar in a way that others can get benefits from. You see, customer service or serving other people is the highest of all abilities that socially adept people know how to do. Skilled people know how to talk, but when a person goes through loss, they might not talk as well and as frequently as they once did. Loss is something that we grieve through. The grief process has been outlined in a good four or five different sections of how that works and I literally got to watch my mother grieve through her process as my father literally started to go to the end of his life. Now, in life, we have moments of time to make a difference for someone. 
in those moments of time, we have to decide, am I going to behave selfishly and throw things back in that individual's face, or am I going to literally serve not only myself in being the highest good I can possibly be of being the most generous, the most loving, the most kind, or am I going to sit there in some subservient sort of mentality that because I did something for someone, they owe me something in return? You see, that in itself is actually a negotiation. When there's a negotiation, someone says, I'd like to do this if you would do that. And once there's an accord, an agreement of sorts, then that can commence. But when we don't have an accord like that, when someone presumes that they have the rights to do things, it makes things awfully difficult for the other person. Now, in moments of time, we have the ability to serve people selflessly. We can also reject any form of in-kind payment, but that's not always proper. People always want balance in relationships. If someone buys you a tea or a coffee, you want to return the favor the next time you're together or the next round, perhaps, if you're going out for drinks. That is how you keep a balanced relationship among friendly adults, socializing business partners and other things. When we have a business exchange, there's usually an exchange of money, something monetary for service or product or programming. Now, in truth, that programming took a lot of time to develop, I'm pretty sure. So there is a value to the content of that property, and it's called intellectual property. There's also a copyright notice listed on that documentation that literally says you don't have the right to use this exactly as it is. You can certainly borrow from it if you're producing a research paper or if you're putting something together to talk about online. You can quote me for sure, but in truth, we usually like to ask permission, if we can, to the author to utilize that information. We also have the ability to learn from things, so when we share information we've learned, that's generally okay. It's sort of a training, if you will. But in life, we have moments of time to truly make a difference for others, and the way we do that is to simply not steal from them. You see, when we steal ideas and don't attribute them, we become plagiarists. When we take intellectual property from others, we literally become thieves of their finances. When we take physical property, possessions if you will, we are totally in the situation of being a dorobo as it's called in Japanese, but actually a true pentianti thief. Much like Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, I suppose. But in reality, what we're doing is saying, that I am the Lord of you and I will steal from you because I have rights over you and I have the right to your property because I am superior to thee. And that is not true. We are all created equal underneath the independent declaration of De independence, excuse me, the declaration of, of human rights that says we are all born free and equal under the law. We also have the laws of our own land that says that our property is literally ours and that no person in government, no person in authority, no person in the militia, which nowadays, of course, would be considered the police or law enforcement, has the right to take our property. And yet it happens literally every day. When I had my car in impound and it racking up charges every single day, I was literally being stolen from in my finances because I did not authorize that car to be impounded. It was unlawful, actually, for them to impound it because I was not being taken in on any formal charges, per se. Nothing in my car was utilized in anything illegal, so it shouldn't have been taken at all. But when I had an impound, many things were not only damaged and ruined, but many things were pilfered from me. A beautiful silver pocket knife went missing from my tools. My original pendulum that was sort of broken but kept as a memento of my experience in my faith walk was also stolen. Many marketing cards that were carefully just a few days earlier placed inside plastic bags to make a sale preparation happen were removed from my work. You see, there's always someone who likes other people's ideas and feels they have the right to steal, but what they're doing is they're completely missing out on what the Lord has planned for their life. The Lord gave them different gifts. The Lord gave them different opportunities. The Lord gave them practically other means to create an income for themselves, but they either have not found it yet or they've not listened well enough to figure out how to make it happen. Now, as a marketing consultant, I can tell people all I can about what I hear them say in terms of what they're looking for in their life, in terms of time management, 
professional skill sets, income, or revenue from their work, but if they're unwilling to implement in a timely fashion, it makes it almost impossible for them to reap the benefits of their service. The reality is that relationships build over time. Sometimes we're in a relationship that goes really, really well for several months and then falls apart and a few years later we pick it up again and start all over. In other cases, like one of my dear friends, we literally know that we can call each other, talk like old times, we can share everything going on in our lives. There's no barriers at all to our sharing. There's no political correctness. It's just, this is what's going on in my life, what's going on in your life, and everything is fine. And the love is still basically there, being between friends. In the business realm, we have to be a little bit more politically correct, a little bit more PC, if you will. We have to be a little bit more careful about what we share because if we're struggling, it means that we're not doing well, but that can mean something else to someone else. It can sound like we don't know what we're doing, but it could just be we haven't met the right clients yet. It might be we haven't found the right job for our career abilities. But when a person steals intellectual property, documentation, business forms, tax forms, and other things, that is a malicious attack. It's also a selfish thing to do, usually by people who are here illegal, or people who like to do illegal things and ruin a person's name, destroy credit, and maliciously harm other people. You see, there's no God in any of that. There certainly is no Jesus Christ walk through that faith. And when a person maliciously gets into a person's storage unit, takes things out of boxes, puts them on that person to drive them a little batty, it's really malicious. It's sort of a hate crime. And when a person takes intimate objects or religious objects, it becomes a hate crime. When a person infers that a person's not man enough or woman enough, that literally is a gender bias. There's all kinds of people in this world. They have all kinds of conditions. They have all kinds of situations. They have all kinds of finances. But the truth is, those at the bottom of the totem pole need the most physical help is not true. They don't need the most emotional help either. They certainly don't need to shrink. But what they do need is opportunities. Opportunities to shine. Opportunities to live to their fullest. Opportunities to earn opportunities to create revenue, but they can only do this through the relationships in which they forge and they facilitate. When we look at that concept, we have to look at what are we doing to help that person to facilitate healthy relationships? Or are we participating in the detriment and the demise of an individual soul? Are we destroying a life in our selfishness? Are we destroying a life in the lies we tell ourselves about our rights to ruin a person's life? You see, in our life, we have lots of people who think they know what they're doing, but the truth is they may not. They may be in the exploration mode. They may be in the try it out mode. They may be in I'm going to experience to see if this work mode. We don't really know because statistical data can be a lie. The point is that when a person violates the mind, heart, or soul of another human being, they literally have lost their rights. They have lost their right to speak about that person's life. and They most certainly have lost their rights in front of the house of God. You see, God is not a destroyer. He's a raiser up, if you will. He raises people higher with their vibrations. He raises people to higher ground. He gifts them. He heals them. He does all kinds of miraculous things according to any person of faith or spirituality. But the reality is how much do we recognize him in the day to day? How often do you simply wake up in the morning and say, thank you, Lord, that I'm still alive. Thank you that I have an opportunity to serve my community. Thank you that I have the opportunity to help others. Thank you, Lord, for the food that you provide me. Thank you, Lord, for the income that I have. Thank you, and the thank yous continue. You see, that's something that people of faith often forget as to how to thank the Lord. We know how to pray to a point, but how do we create our prayers such that they really come to pass? Well, people often come into our lives, but they don't recognize they're on someone's prayer life. They can be told this, but they sort of wig out in that. They sort of not believe it. But the truth is we can say everything happens for a reason, but sometimes it happens to bring people closer together, not tear them apart. In life, we have moments of time to make a difference for other people. Now is the time, people. Now is the time to make a difference for others. Now is the time to help people get jobs. Now is the time to help them earn an income. Now is the time to partner and create strategic, profitable partnerships. Now is literally the time, but only can we do this if someone else hasn't monkeyed around in our lawful rights for our personhood, our paperwork, and our property. I'll talk more about this in the upcoming audio cast, but I'm hoping you're getting it. 
that in life we have moments of time to make a difference for someone. And the only way to do that is through honesty, integrity, and doing lifelong service. Thanks for listening. This is Blake Genson of Blaze Communications, LLC, saying make it a great day, people.